This is the CCEA, GCSE Maz paper. This is the M3 paper. And this one then is from the summer, so it's from May 2023. Um, let's take a wee look then at question one. Uh, Debbie works as a salesperson for an insurance company. Her rate of pay is £11.50 per hour. Every time she sells an insurance policy, she receives a bonus of £7.25. Last week, Debbie worked these hours. Her total pay was £537.25. How many insurance policies did she sell? So we're going to work out how long she worked. So she obviously worked 8 hours here from 8am to 4pm. And we have 8 here. We have 8 here. We have 8 here, and then 8 a.m. until 12 noon, so we have 4. So 8 times 4, so we're just going to add all these up. So it's going to be 4 eighths, which is 32. So she worked then for 36 hours. So if she worked 36 hours and she get paid £11.50 an hour, if we do 36 times 11.50... We get then four hundred and fourteen pounds, and so four hundred and fourteen pounds is how much she got then for eleven pounds fifty per hour. And then if we subtract that from five three seven twenty five, so some we're going to do is five hundred and thirty seven pounds twenty five, take away four hundred and fourteen. Sorry, you can't see that there, but five hundred thirty seven pounds twenty five take away four fourteen, so it was. Five three seven pounds twenty five take away four fourteen that gives a hundred and twenty three pounds twenty five and that must have been all our bonuses then so we do that then divided by seven twenty five and if we do that we get an answer then of 17 so how many insurance policies did she sell the answer to that one then is going to be 17 Okay, number two, survey is issued online by post, by text and face to face. The number of responses received for each method are shown in the table. So for online, then we they issued 240 and they got 120 responses and it's the same. Then it sort of gives you information then for the other three. Frank thinks that you're most likely to get a response from surveys issued by text. Is he right? You must show working to justify your answer. So this first one, they got 120 responses out of 240. I think most people can hopefully see that's going to be a half. Uh, for the second one, 30 over 100, that's 3 tenths. So that's, that's obviously smaller then than a half. Uh, by text, is 150 over 300. And that's a half as well. And then finally, face to face is 120 over 160. So how does that cancel? The zeros will cancel first of all, and we get 12 over 16, and that then kind of gets three quarters. Frank thinks the most likely response is by text. So by text, we had this one here, and that was only a half, but three quarters is actually more. So face to face. So our answer then to that's going to be no. And I suppose that's then because face to face is the highest um, number three um, write an expression for the perimeter of the triangle simplify your answer so the perimeter is the distance around it so with this plus this plus this so that's going to be 2a plus 3 plus 2a plus 3 plus b minus 5 and they want us to tidy it up so with a 2a and a 2a here so that's going to be 4a we have a b and then on a 3 and a 3 gives me 6 take away 5 so that then just gives me a plus 1 uh, the perimeter of the triangle is 30. You're told B is 9. Work out the value of A. That means if they're told the perimeter is 30 and we've worked this out as a perimeter, that means 4A plus B plus 1 is 30. And we know B is 9. So 4A plus 9 plus 1 is 30. Joining together are like terms. 4A plus 10 is 30. That gives me 4A 
is 20 and my value for a then is going to be 5. Number 4, a class of 30 pupils choose their favourite drink. 40% choose cola, uh, 3 tenths choose milk, 3 choose water, the rest choose other. How many pupils choose other? Okay, so whatever way we want to work this out, because we could do percentages in this one here. So it's going to be 40 plus 30, because 3 tenths is 30%. 3 out of 30 is 10%. 40 and 30 and 10, that adds in to 80%. So it's going to be other is going to then be 20%. So 20%, how many choose other? This isn't a straightforward one. So t we know 10% of this is going to be 3. So 20% then is going to be 6. There are other ways of working that out, but that's, I guess, what we're going to do. How many people choose other? Sorry. Uh, we then have this wee table here. Uh, use the information to draw a pie chart for the 30 pupils. Um, so we have our number of pupils. So let me see our other we knew then was going to be 6. Water was 3. Uh, 3 tenths choose milk. So remember 1 tenth we said was 3. So that's going to be 9 choose milk. And then 40%, so we know 10% is 3. So then that should be 12. And if we check those, those should add correctly. 12 plus 9 is 21. Plus 3 plus 6 does indeed give us 30. Um, for this, obviously, it's a pie chart, so we're going to have to work out our angle here. And the way we do that is to get our wee number and work out how many times 30 goes into 360. I think most people know that what that is, I hope. But if we do 360, then divided by 30, it gives us 12. That means we're multiplying then each of our different things in by 12. So our angle here then is going to be 144. I've times that by 12. 12 12 is 144. 9 twelves are 108. 3 twelves are 36 and 6 twelves then are going to be 72 and we can do then our pie chart from there. So whatever way we want to go, um, I'm going to use my protractor here. So we've given us this line to start and this is our centre. So the first angle we want is 144 degrees. So as accurately as you can, make sure that we centre point is right in the centre there and then measure round. We're going from zero here all the way around then to 100, so there's 140, so 144 is there. Now we don't need to panic that that's sitting outside our circle, because we just need to join up the bit we need. So again, going from the centre to that wee line, I just join that up there, and I know then that that's going to be cola. Remembering then to go from this line to the milk then. So again, I set up my protractor. And the central as I can, again, our zero line is here. So I'm going to go round, you can't see this, sorry, there we are now, hopefully that's better. There's 90, there's 100, so 108 is actually going to be here. So there's my 108, and again, I line this up, and I join that, and I'm going to have milk in there. My next one's water, which is 36 degrees. Again, see where my zero is there, so that's going to be the inside scale that I'm moving. Zero, 10, 20, 30. So 36 then would be here. And obviously then we don't need to measure the last one, uh, but it's always a good wee check. So this was water. And then let's check that this is indeed 72. Measuring from there, and then sure enough, we're a wee bit off there, but that no, we're okay actually, we're okay. So that's working around on 72, that's going there, and that's going to be our other. Uh, some people like a wee title, um, so you have drinks or something like that, uh, but that's where we are then for question four. Uh, table shows part of a train timetable from Edinburgh to St Andrews. The express trains travel directly. The standard trains stop at other stations. So that's why the express goes straight then from there to St Andrews. That's fine. Alex arrives in Edinburgh Airport at 
14.06. It takes him 26 minutes to collect his luggage. By taxi, he arrives at Edinburgh Station 18 minutes later. How long will he have to wait at the station for the next train then to St Andrews? So it's 13.06. And then we need to do... Make sure you can see all this, okay? So it's 13.06, and then we're adding on 26 minutes, and then we're adding on 18 minutes. So I guess it's, you need to be careful with calculations, obviously, with um, time. But if we go 26 plus 18, and that gives me 44. So 44 minutes after that, that means we're getting in then the station at 13. 50. So he's missed that one there. So I think then he can get the 14.24. So that's going to be 24 minutes plus the 10 minutes. So he has to wait then 34 minutes. The distance between Edinburgh and St Andrews is 54 miles. Calculate the average speed at which the express train travels between Edinburgh and St Andrews. So We'll assume all the express trains travel at the same speed, but we're going 14 over 1403, taking away then kind of 1318, or if you want kind of the different ones. So let me see for so 1403, 1318. If you take those times away, then you get 45 minutes. So it takes 45 minutes, and that's to travel then 54 miles. Now, it's mess of this. People get confused with this. You could just work out how long, sorry, how many miles you would travel then in one hour. So you divide that by three, multiply by four, and that will give you miles per hour. Or because we're incurring miles and minutes here, if we actually do 54 and we do divide it then by three quarters. So why three quarters? Because 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour and we're in miles per hour. So that will work. So I'm going to do 54 divided by 0.75. And that then gives me 72. So my speed then is 72 miles per hour. Question 6. A diagram shows a net which is to be folded to make an open box. Calculate the volume of the box. So it's 45 by 18 by 24. 45 multiplied by 18 multiplied by 24 and again stick that in your calculator and you get 19440. Calculate the length of the longest straight line which can be drawn on the base of the box. There's a question. The longest straight line can be drawn, so hopefully you will realise this is the base because the other four sides are folding up and so it's going to be this line here. So how are we going to work out that distance? We know that's 45, we know that's 24, so this is actually turned into a Pythagoras question. Um, and so we're going to use 45 here and 24. So Pythagoras states that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. c squared equals 45 squared plus 24 squared and so that means in the c squared is 2601 and then let me see calculate the length of the longest straight line so c then is going to be the square root of 2601 so there's a square root button there 2601 yeah it works out nicely for us so we then get 51 so we've taken our square root there and we get 51 Number seven, Greg brought a mobile phone a year later. He sold it for £54. What was Greg's percentage loss on the phone? Well, first of all, we need his loss before we get his percentage loss. So that's going to be 180, take away 54. And that gives me then 126. And if we do then 126 over 180, what I always say to people is, this is just like you get 126 out of 180 in a test. What percentages did you get? And most people seem to be able to work out that calculation. 126 over 180 times 100 is one way of doing it. And we get 70%. Question 8, solve this equation. So we have a bracket here, so we need to multiply out. So it's 4 times y gives me 4y. We mistake, people make the forget to multiply this bit. Plus 8, 4 times 2 is 8, gives me 22. The way we do it is take away 8 from both sides. That gives me 4y is 14. And then we're going to divide both sides by 4. 
I'll make it y is 14 over 4. That's going to go in 3 times. And you get then 3 and a half. So obviously remember to write it in. In there. Question 9. Local sports club runs a tuck shop during matches. Before we, last week's match, the club bought 25 packs, each containing 6 drinks, costing £3 per pack. 15 packs, each containing 12 bags of crisps, costing £2.40 per pack. 35 packs, each containing 5 chocolate bars, costing £1 per pack. Calculate the total cost to the club. So we don't need to worry about these numbers here. I sus would suspect they're going to be in the next part here, but that's okay. 25 packs costing three pounds per pack so that's going to be 25 times three which is 75 pounds 15 packs at two pounds 40 per pack 15 times two pounds 40 which i think then is going to be 36 pounds and then 35 packs costing a pound that's an easy one 35 on your calculator just add those together and you will get then a hundred and 46 pounds the tuck shop prices drinks are 80p each crisps are 50p per bag chocolate bars are 30p each. there's a special deal one drink one bag of crisps one chocolate bar for 1.50 during the match 115 people bought the special deal by the end of the match the tuck shop had sold all the drinks crisps and chocolate bars what was the tuck shop's profit for the day goodness me okay so first of all one drink one bag of crisps one chocolate bar is 1.50 and they sold 115 of those so 115 times 1.50 is gonna be 172 pounds 50 so that's how much they made then on their special deal so let's see um, then they sold we need to work out what we have then for this. So the drinks then were 80p each. And if, how many drinks do they have? So they get 25 packs, each containing six drinks. So that was 150 drinks. And then they take away 115 because that's how many went in the special deal. And that then gives 35 and they were sold then for 80p if you do 35 times 80p you get 28 pounds okay sorry this should actually be on the other page obviously uh, that's okay it's just handier to have it here then that 15 packs of 12 bags of crisps 15 times 12 then is 180 take away the 115 and that meant there were 65 they sold those for 60p and that came then to 32 pounds 50. they then had 35 packs of five chocolate bars which is 175. you take away 115 from that and we have 60 they sold those for 30p and that comes then the 18 pounds so how much did the thing the um club bring in in terms of thing they brought in 172 pounds 50. they brought in 28 pounds they brought in 32 pounds 50 and they brought in 18 pounds if you total those up it comes to 251 pounds and of course they spent 156 sorry 146 pounds so if we do 251 take away 146 then we get 105 so they made 105 pounds profit quite labored that question question 10 um, ac and dg so there's ac there's dg they're parallel lines Angle CBF, CBF is 50, that's okay. Angle BED is 100. Yeah, we have that one in as well. Uh, what type of angle is angle BEF? 
Uh, what type of angle is angle B E F? Let me see. So we can see those angles are that. What type? Of, oh, sorry. What type of triangle is triangle B E F? Give a reason for each angle found. Okay. Angle B. Sorry, I'm up now. Up to speed. Angle B F E. That has to be 50 degrees. Why is that? So again, we need to write that. B F E is 50 degrees, and that's because of the alternate angle. There's a wee Z there. Hopefully. You see that um, angle B E F B E F that one's going to be 80 degrees because those two add up to a straight line so that is angle B E F equals 80 those angles add up to a straight line and then angle E B F is going to be that's 80 and that's 50 so that's 130 and it's a triangle so that means that has to be 50 so that's angle EBF that's because of angles in a triangle and that's fine so that's 50 and that's 50 and that's 80 that means those two sides are going to be the same that means it has to be an isosceles triangle Quest 11 then, 40 customers order chips in a takeaway, 6 customers take both salt and vinegar on their chips, 10 customers take vinegar only, uh, this information is shown on the Venn diagram, 22 customers take salt on their chips, use the Venn diagram to work out how many customers take neither salt nor vinegar on their chips, so 22 customers take salt on their chips and that's 6 of them, so 6 taken away from 22 has to be 16. And then 10 plus 6 plus 16 gives 32, so that then needs to be 8. So what have I done? I've added those, they all added the 32, there were 40 people in total, so I've taken that away. And so neither salt or vinegar is going to be 8. Um, the ages of 21 workers in an office are recorded as this. Draw a stem and leaf diagram to display this set of data. So this tends to be a bit messy. So we're going to do our stem going down here. And again, I've searched through these a wee bit. So it's a bit of a cheat because I've kind of paused and gone on from there. But we have numbers kind of going from 23, I think, is the smallest one I can see. And then it goes up as high as 62. So we need to do 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Again, looking through any numbers in the 20s, just to try and get them in the order. There's 20s, 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 20s. So I think that's 5, so I have 23, 23, 26, 27, 28, 6, 7 and 8. If you do the same, I'm not going to kind of do it in the videos, I would be tempted to cross those out because we're done with those. Then do the same with the 30s and just go slowly and clearly and make sure you've got the right numbers. But the 30s, it ends up being 32, 36, 37, 38, 38. 40s there's quite a few there's going to be a 40 there's a 42 there's a 45 there's a 46 there's a 47 and then there's two 49s and note what I'm doing here I'm doing these under each other you need to do that in the stem and leaf diagram these all need to line up with each other as you work your way through there's only three in the 50s 51 53 note again I'm in line with each other and 58 and then there's one 62. One thing that a stem and leaf diagram needs is always a key. So we have a key here, and our first one, 2 slash 3, means 23. And that's my stem and leaf diagram going there. Okay. A new worker joined the office. He is age 34. What effect will this have on the median age? So it's 21 workers. So is it going to be the 11th worker then is 
the median. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 11. And then there should, so should be 10 here. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that is indeed the median, which is going to be 40. If someone joins then who is 34, then there's going to be an extra one here, which means the median then is going to get lower. So... So the median will be lowered. Question 13. Colum wants to put 4,500 in the savings account for two years. He can choose one of the following options. 3.5% compound interest per year for two years. 5% uh, compound interest per year for the first year, followed by 2% compound interest per year for the second year. Which option is better and by how much? There are loads of ways of doing compound interest and kind of adding things on. But if we have 4,500, what you can do, nice and slowly, find 1%, find 3.5%, add it on. Find 1%, find 3.5%. Add it on, and so we can work then from there. The quicker way is to go 1.035 squared, and that should give you how much then is in the account. Be careful with that though. And that gives me 4820 pounds 51. Um, for the other option, the 4500, and we're multiplying by 1.05, which will be our 5%. That gives me 4725. And then we're going to do 4725 multiplied by 1.02. And that gives me 48. One nine pounds fifty. So how much then do we have? So here four eight two zero oh, fifty one that gives me three hundred and twenty pounds fifty one and here I have got three hundred and nineteen pounds fifty. They're very close. Uh, this one's bigger than by one pound one. So which option is better and by how much? Um, it's going to be option A and by one pound one P. The graph shows the costs of hiring a mini digger for up to seven days, including the delivery charge. Use the graph to find the delivery charge. Well, it, the thing is here, because it's, if you want it for no days, you've got to pay £50. Um, so the delivery charge in this case is going to be 50 Um Part two, you need to find the gradient of the line. So we need to find a couple of points here then that work. You can do it a couple of different ways. I kind of like that one there. Uh, and it seems to hit there where it hits there so let's go for that and again probably a ruler is a nicer thing to use here excuse my laziness but look at our scale here we've gone across here so that's going to be four and then that's going to be from 50 up to 350 so it's going to be four over 300 um so sorry not four over 300 it's going to be 300 divided by four and that gives us 75. So the gradient of our line then is 75. What does the gradient represent when hiring the mini digger? If we go back here, every time you go across one, you're going up 75. That's what gradient means. And that's the number of days. So for every day you hire it, it costs 75 pounds. So that's the cost per day. Cost per day is £75. 15. Expand and simplify. So we need to multiply this out. 2y times 3y gives us 6y squared. 2y times minus 7 is minus 14y and then minus 8y. Joining together our like terms gives us 6y squared minus 22y. Uh, 
a circle of diameter 12 centimeter just fits inside a semicircle shown show that the shaded area and unshaded area are exactly the same okay so the diameter of the circle which just fits inside that's 12 so what does that mean that means we know that's 12 for the wee circle then the radius is 6 so we can find the radius of that what about the bigger semicircle can we see that 12 is actually going to be the same as the radius so if we kind of use that we can work out then the area of the semicircle so for the wee circle all right we uh, we're going to go area is pi r squared area is pi times 6 squared and that's then going to be 36 pi might be handier to keep it that way in a wee second but we'll see but that gives us then uh, if you stick that into your calculator you're going to get 113.097 and it kind of goes on from there so for the bigger one and it's a semicircle our area is going to be a half pi r squared i hope you see where i've managed to get that from so area because it's half of a circle half times pi on a radius here is actually then going to be 12 a half times pi times 12 squared so area then is a half times pi times 144 which is going to be half of 144 is 72 pi but remember of course then we need to take away the small bit which is inside it because we want unshaded so then on shaded is equal to 72 pi take away 36 pi and funny can you see how it's actually easier just to keep it in terms of pi here the numbers are easier rather than dealing with decimals so that gives 36 pi so the area of the wee one is 36 pi the area of the unshaded bit then of the big one here is 36 pi so we're showing them that they're the same uh, the times and which members at a gym spend on a treadmill are recorded in the table estimate the time spent on a treadmill so we need to do a couple of things here we need to find our midpoint and then we need to find our totals by multiplying those things through. Midpoint of not the 15 is 7.5. This then is 22.5 between 30 and 45. 37.5 between 45 and 60 is 52.5. Multiplying these up then, 8 times 7.5. Sixty-seven point five. Thirty-seven point five times five. Hundred eighty-seven point five. And then four times fifty-two point five. That's two ten, is it? Gives me then two hundred and ten. If we total that up, so two ten plus 187.5 plus 67.5 plus 60 that equals then 525 and then we need to total this up 8 and 3 and 4 and 5 gives us 20 so we have to go then 525 all over 20 and that gives us then 26.25 Part B, explain why your answer in A is only an estimate of the mean time. Well, we don't know the exact times that they spent on the treadmill. That's why it's an estimate. We know eight people spent between zero and 15 minutes. And so it could have been one minute. It could have been 14 minutes. We just don't know. But we do our best guess, which is then kind of taking the midpoint. All right. So we don't know exact time. In grouped data. We don't know the exact time. So that's why it's only an estimate. Barry sold his car for 10225 The car had 
depreciated by 18.2% since Barry bought it originally. How much did Barry pay for the car originally? So because it's dropped by 18.2%, then 10225 equals 100% take away 18.2%, which is 81.8%. So to work out the original amount, we're going to divide this by 81.8. That'll find me 1%. So that's 10225 divided by 81.8. That gives me 125. And then 100% is 125 times by 100 which is obviously then 12,500. Okay. Uh, solve this couple of different ways of doing it. Um, I'm going to find a common denominator first. So they all go into 12, which makes life a wee bit easier. You can multiply the brackets if you don't like this method, that's okay. But if we go 4 over 12 upon 2x minus 5, plus 9 over 12 upon 3x plus 1 is equal to 10 over 12. Now, the magic move here is to times through everything by 12. Now, timesing everything by 12 here, it just gives me 4 upon this, 9 upon this, and then 10. So we get 4 upon 2x minus 5 plus 9 upon 3x plus 1 equals 10. Multiplying out our brackets gives us 8x minus 20 plus 27x plus 9 equals 10. Like terms then gives me 35x um, minus 11, I think, equals 10. Adding 11 to both sides, 35x gives me 21, and x then is 21 over 35. Now they both divide by 7, so that then would be 3 over 5 is our cancelled down version of that. Write 4, 7, 2, 5 as a product of prime factors. It obviously doesn't divide by 2. It will most likely divide by 3. by 3 again to give me 5, 2, 5. I don't know if it divides by 3 again. It does divide by 3 again, which gives me 1, 7, 5. Now I know 3 goes into 180, so it's not going to work again. So we go 5. Of course, your calculator will do all this for you if you hit the factor button. Um, but it's good that we can kind of work out our working out here. That's 5. And then takes me down to 7 and divide by 7 and I get my 1. So my answer is, is 3 of those, so it would then be 3 cubed. 5 squared times by 7. Factorise this here. So we are looking for two numbers and multiply to give me minus 35 and the same two numbers add to give me 2 because that's a 1x squared. I can put it straight in there. Um, so then that's going to be x plus 7 and then x minus 5. So factorising that gives an x plus 7 um, x minus 5. Hence or otherwise, so hence means using what we've worked out before. So if I take the 35, this is a quadratic, and the way we solve quadratics is to get everything to the one side. So I would rewrite that then as x squared plus 2x minus 35 equals 0. And then my next line is just from above, x plus 7, x minus 5 equals 0. That means x plus 7 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0, which gives me an answer of x is minus 7 or 5. So writing that in the right place, minus 7 or 5. Find the equation of the line passing through the point 0, minus 2 and 6, 16. Well, we're going to try and fill it into y equals m 
x plus c and so we need to work out our gradient here first of all hopefully you know your gradient formula which is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 if you don't you can kind of draw it out and try and do a rise over run thing if you want that will work too uh, but in this case so my y2 then it's going to be 16 minus minus 2 all over 6 minus 0 so that's 18 over 6 uh, and that then gives me 3 so it's saying y equals 3x plus c now what you can do then is pick a coordinate and substitute it into this but this is a special coordinate they've given us 0 minus 2 and so that means think about the point 0 minus 2 that is their y intercept there so we can just then write y equals 3x minus 2. There is another way you could substitute either of those two into this as in I change my 16 sorry my y for a 16 and my x for a 3 and that'll give you the minus 2 there anyway but because they've given us that 0 minus 2 it makes life slightly very slightly easier. Uh, a boy's flying a kite as shown in the diagram calculate h the height of the kite above the ground so this looks like a trigonometry question and we're going to find this distance here do you see for the wee triangle and then i'm going to add 85 centimeters to it so here's my triangle here and they've told me this is 35 they've told me this is 7 and this is h which is a bit annoying because i'm going to put label it away in h but this is the opposite this is the hypotenuse and this then is the adjacent I want the opposite, I have the hypotenuse so I'm going to use sine and I'm going to go sine 35 and then who oh, we're calling h, quite confusing over 7 h equals 7 sine 35 let's make sure I'm in the right mode here yeah, in the degrees. Um, so 7 times sine 35 equals that's 4.015 and then I'm going to add 85 centimeters to it so be careful here because we're in meters so it's going to be 0 0.85 and if I add those then I get out 4.865 meters Uh, number 24, not long to go now, a cylindrical can of beans has a radius of 3.4 and a height of 12. The entire curved surface area is covered by a label. The label has a 1 centimeter overlap allowing for sticking. Calculate the area of this label. So I'm going to find the curved surface area and then I'm going to, I guess, well I'm going to find the circumference and then I'm going to add a centimeter to that I think is probably my plan. So the deal is whenever we open this out, we get this and that there circumference is the same as this height here so that's going to be then 2 pi r and then that's going to be 12 so I'm going to add 1 to that for the wee extra bit and then work out my area from there so circumference is 2 pi r circumference is 2 times pi and my radius it said then was 3.4 so that's then going to be 6.8 pi 6.8 pi Let's just do some sums. 6.8 multiplied by pi, and that gives me 21.36. 21.3628 we'll go for. And then plus 1. Doesn't quite equal that, but you know what I mean. So it gives 22.3628, and we're going to then multiply that by 12. So I'm going to add 1 to this and then times by 12 and I get 268.35 Question 25 The following information is available relating to a data set on age We know that the median is 14 We know the maximum age is 35 The range of the ages is 32 Okay the lower quartile is 12 and the inner quartile range is 8. Use all the information above to draw a box plot for the following data set. Okay. So we know the median is going to be 14. So I'm going to do my 14 there. 
hard to know exactly where they want this. I'm just kind of going to do it over it. Um, the median's 14. The maximum's 35, so it's going to be here. And then they give us information, and because the range of A's is 32, that means the lowest then must be 3. The upper, the lower quartile is 12, so that's going to be there. And then they tell us the interquartile range, so that's the distance between the lower quartile and the upper quartile is 8. So that's 12, then that's going to hit at 20. And then we can now do our box plot from there. Excuse me. Hang on, that hasn't worked out too badly. And then join this up with a nice thick line as well. If we can, it's hard to see that. Go nice and heavy so the examiner knows you've drawn that in. Uh, though it might not matter, you've kind of got the five pieces of information that you need there. Uh, Jane states that the majority of people in this data set are aged s below 16. Is she correct? So I guess she is because so the way this is split it up into kind of you know quarters. So a quarter of the people are there, a quarter of the people are actually between those two ages. They're ten, kind of 10 and 12 and let me see. Sorry, between 12 and 14. So there's your cutoff at 16. So yeah, the majority, because there's there's a 50% cutoff. So that's higher than 50%. Yeah. So the answer is, is she correct? The answer is yes. And because 50% are below the 14, because that's my median there. Um, so majority will be under 16 um, and that is us